Good morning. Let's get this started. I'm about to wrangle stuff. Trust me, this is the talk. And trust me, I'll explain. Uh, my talk's uh, called Wrangling Large Rail Code Bases. My name is Stefan Agawan, and I work for Pivotal Labs, where I pretend I'm doing that. Um, first, I want to say, though, what I like to say in stand-up. Who of you um, does a stand-up every morning? We have this thing where every morning you, you quickly tell what's been going on, what's, what's supposed to go on today, and what might be an issue. Who's doing that, too? Have you ever said what he said? Yeah, some of you have. So I like, I like to make a stand-up simple so everyone has to say something, but then you go after your pair that you've paired with all day, and he said it so beautifully, you just say what he said. So I want to say what they said about all the talks that we had yesterday morning, and I would hope that you can, at the end of this, see that maybe I fit in with those in that they've all been talking about very small things, and I'll be talking about very large things. Um, if, if a talk is a stake, then this one is not well done. I hope it's well done, but it's, it's not well done in this way. So it's kind of medium rare, probably, because I had a conversation with my boss, and Sandy was at her office on Wednesday, and then I kind of wanted to redo everything. So I redo, did everything yesterday, and so it's, it's kind of, I don't know what's going to happen. So I would really like your feedback, and uh, maybe there is a good place. Um, also, I'm going to use the next big thing as um, a place for two of my examples. So I'm going to be referring to that page, which I'm also going to pull up. Don't pull it up now, pull it up later. Um, yeah, so just, just for reference. And one more disclaimer, nothing I might say that other people say, they actually say, except if I say so. OK, so let's talk about large apps. In fact, never build large apps. <laughs> Anyone have any idea why I would say that? It's hard. It sucks. It may, <laughs> go make a mess, yeah. Um, so Sandy's all smiley and all, but then she tells you, your, code want, your app wants to kill you. Yeah? <laughs> and I'm like, I never saw it that way. I always thought I am out to kill it. You know, but going with that wrangling theme, and here's maybe where I should explain. So wrangling stuff. It is two days ago that I sat at this um, at tequila tasting that we had at the Oak, where it was uncovered that I didn't know what wrangling means. I thought it was tackling, like in uh, football. Turns out, one of you guys wanted to bring me Wrangler jeans so that I could walk more like a cowboy. I only have this hat, sorry. If anyone's from Texas, this actually says on one of the sides that everything's bigger there. So, if what Sandy says is true, then my code is out to do that to me. At the end, maybe, you know, we can be more like this guy. Or, actually found this last, but I like it best. Or maybe, we can just chill out. <laughs> so partly because my brain's melting under this thing, and because I think I look ridiculous, uh, Let's get rid of that. So again, never build large apps. Okay, so I build a tiny app. As I already said, this next big thing, um, what is that? Um, yeah, I should license that. Uh, so it does not do a lot. You can sign up to find nothing about, out about that new thing. And I realize I should have made that smaller. Is that still readable? No, it doesn't matter. So what you can do is you can sign up. So probably Heroku fell asleep, doesn't matter. So I can ask to sign up, hit enter, and if the server ever wakes up, it'll, it'll say, yep, thank you for signing up. Um, let's see if that works. Still dead. Local dead. <laughs> this is sad. So let, let's those guys wake up. So that's what you can do with the app, okay? OK, but I'll, I'll talk about big apps. Who has ever worked in a code base where the models directory of your Rails app, let's say it's a Rails app, looked somewhat like this? Yes, I feel your pain. Um, you know, I've, I've taken the liberty of spreading that out. 
um, that's a mess. Yehuda would be like, you know, ah, that sucks, I want to rip it apart, and then he goes and does it. So um, it's a pile of crap. So I, I like to think that what I write is crap, and then that means that if this is a big pile, it's a big pile of crap. Um, I want a couple things of my application. I would like it to be structured, and I put these names down here because I wanted to remind myself to, uh, to reference Ben, who yesterday said when he had this method, and suddenly the method had a good name, and then in the implementation, it was like all crazy, and he didn't want to go down that level. You know, why is there not a bit more structure in a Rails app than, you know, hello application, models, well, you know, you, <laughs> you're right in it, you can't get out there. Um, and Roy, you know, I want to mention him too because I really like the modules approach to HTML, was saying, you know, I want structure in my HTML. So everyone's kind of seeking structure. I'm seeking that too. I want my pieces to be comprehensible. All of them said. Uh, I want the individual pieces to act agile, not in this process way, but more in the way of you know, if a small feature request comes, I want to make a small change to fulfill it. And I want to be able to be focused, or maybe I could say I want the code to be focused. Maybe if I look at one thing, it should be doing one. So prevent the big pile, prevent cognitive overload, allow for change, and allow for concentration. <sighs> nah, not happening here. Um, I should say maybe it's happening, but not for me, and not right now, and not just looking at the code. But wouldn't it be great if, if I could get that? I showed you the big, the big pile. Wouldn't it be great if it could be more like recycling? More piles, within each pile, still crap, but more organized. You know, that's the difference between throwing it in the waste bin and in the recycling bin. It's a huge difference, huge difference. And that's the difference I want to get to today. So I don't know this code, but I went by file name and sorted it a little bit. You know, wouldn't it be great if I could sort that in, in a Ruby code base? And Matsu's like, yeah, you can. We got namespaces, modules. Use a module. OK, so I could put all these things into modules, and I could give them names. Now, again, I don't know this code right here. I'm mean, even admitting I don't know what that was. Um, but you know, retraction, I didn't know what that was, but there's three files dealing with it. Seems to be very important to retract things. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, let's look at these, these qualities. So structured, yes, I, at least I can now see one more level, right? If I would introduce that module, I could see one more level. The modules might also make sense, but Agile, it's still, if I want to have a small feature and a small change, then I need to kind of be able to prove that my piece is small, because only then I can move forward alone. But this is still, everything is still together, so I cannot do that. Um, focused, again, I cannot prove that. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if I could stuff these modules into a box, and then in that box, I can be sure that I'm only dealing with that module and that's all I have to worry about. Carl's like, gems, dude. Use gems. I'm like, OK. Um, and Ben's like, depend on your abstractions. And he said, put your pay, was it the payment gateway? Put your payment gateway in lib. And I say, yeah, now it gets really creepy. I'm like, no, don't do that. Put it in your gem. Right? But do it. Do that abstraction, and then put it in your gem. And br gems bring their own specs with them. Gems live on their own. A gem is a box for you to put stuff in where you can store it away, and then you don't have to think about it anymore. You can, I think what Sandy was saying about the Omega mess, you can put that in, in, if you can put that in such a box, you don't have to worry about it so much. Eric Evans wrote this book, The Main Driven Design, and he called these modules, modules? Um, I was gonna say he calls these gems modules. Choose modules that tell the story of the system and co contain a cohesive set of concepts. What he's really saying is choose boxes that do that. And it kind of inverts what I was just saying. I want structure. It's not that I want structure and that I oppose, uh, impose it. It is that there is structure and I extract it. Right? I can, because otherwise it doesn't tell the story of my application. And to get all patterny and designy on everyone, 
That's what you refer to as you want in that box, you want things to belong together. That's why Eric Evans even calls it out as having high, high cohesion. So in a box, you're seeking higher cohesion, things that are more similar so that you don't have to worry about the outside. I like to think of it as if I store away all my winter gear and I mix it with my summer gear, then I always do not know where to look. Especially complicated here in Boulder, Colorado, where there's so much of all that outdoor crap that I have to keep around because I need to be so active. So higher cohesion um, inside, looser coupling to the outside. So I showed you this um, app, and funny enough, now we're getting back object. Don't ever do a live show. This was supposed to say, thank you for signing up. I suppose that the server or the request timed out. Um, <laughs> can anyone else try to pull that up? It says, um, thanks for signing up the first time you do it. But you guys are probably all on, on something, downloading other stuff. So that doesn't work. But I realized while I was writing this, that when you hit return here, you can pretty fast, if you're on a normal wireless, you can pretty fast send messages to the server. And I was like, that's annoying. I want a server that can defend himself. I don't want to be able to have a server that says, I'm annoyed by you. <laughs> and what is the definition of this? If someone gets more repetitive, then I want to get more annoyed. Simple problem. I, and now of course, this is one example of where I want to put stuff in a box. Wow, the screen small. So I wrote the annoyance gem. The annoyance gem has two public methods. And because the code in there is so crappy and the screen's so big, I deleted what they actually do. But you can basically ask for the annoyance level, and it will tell you how annoyed it is. And it can annoyance adjust the text that you give it. Um, and this is the code. So a gem, as I was saying, is a little box. So it comes with specs, and it has a gem spec defining its dependencies. Uh, it has none, but you know it could have some. So very simple thing, but I already made a box for it. Keep that in mind. No, <laughs> nice. <laughs> New font. <laughs> this is crazy. I literally do not know where that is coming from. So this wireless seems to also make my local host go down. So no dice, you have to pull it up yourself. Um, let's get back to this. So for the annoyance problem, which was really small, I just want you to, to, to modify a string so that it can say that it's annoying. And I already put it in a box. Let's look at it. So that box, you know, I, I, I could deploy it to to GitHub, which I did. I could do to Ruby gems, but that would just be obnoxious because it's so small. So it's structured. The gem is only dealing with its stuff, this small little piece of the world. And I, oh, I wanted to say before about focus, Justin, your surface area rocked my world. Um, this thing has a very, very small surface area because it has only two methods. And really, for my server, I could throw away one of them. But it is very focused. And yes, I can prove it because it's in its little box, and I can run its own specs. And um, so is it always agile? Within the box, I have to say yes. If you're writing a bigger app, you're probably going to say, you know, git submodules suck. I don't want to do that. Or whatever you might have as a different approach. I don't want to do that. This is, by the way, the handlebars tour from yesterday night. I'm in the background ringing this bell so that the people pedal up the hill. And I'm like, yeah, but you can use unbuilt gems, what you may have heard of as vendor gems, um, which is a very simple idea. But you can require gems by path relatively in any application. You just put the source code of the gem somewhere, you point to it, and you have it. That doesn't sound like a big idea, and it probably isn't. But let me show you where this gem is actually living. Um, so if I go two up. This gem actually is 
This gem actually lives in the application of this next big thing. I gave it a gem folder, I put it in there. I didn't put it in vendor because it's my application still, so I made something up, put it in gems. And the gem file is now explicitly stating that I'm making use of this gem. Simple as that. Gem still builds on his own. I could try to run the specs for this thing, but it'll probably not work, so trust me, I just ran it before I came up here. So one of these spec runs here is that gem, the other one is that application. And so I don't have to deal with the problems of Git submodule. It is still all my application. Think of the implications. You can move it forward uh, all together, so I don't have to version my gems. I don't have to pull in a new version, deploy a new version. I'm just moving it all along together. I just want these little boxes, and trust me, gems are easy. I think it's bundle gem, and you get the whole structure, and then you put it in, put your specs in, done. So do that. I already mentioned this. You get explicit dependencies, which is great. And I would say all these questions can be answered with yes. I can now have that. Of course, think back to Eric Evans. I can only do that if I find concepts in my application that make sense. But if I can extract those, I, I highly recommend you do that sooner rather than later. It's something that in the Boulder office here in Pivotal, we've been doing with pretty much every recent project. Um, current one, it's a Rails travel site. And maybe the most um, the most well-known use for a gem is, is this, right? Because you're, you're already using a gem of someone who provides a payment service. But the availability and booking piece is, is our code. But we put it in a gem because it can stand alone. Conversion tracking, put it in a gem because it can stand alone. The application becomes less complex. It talks to other things. Um, and it make, gives the whole thing more structure. Note that these three arrows that I made in this uh, in this gray are actually maybe the import, most important thing of that slide. Suddenly I can talk about dependencies because I can see them and because I can prove them. Before, it was just all this big pile. So am I done? No, because DHH is gonna come around and say, what do I do with Rails? He always has something to say. Hmm. Yeah, okay. It doesn't really fit in this, uh, this formerly beautiful table, but I'll add it. So far, so what he means by this question is, can I do a bit more than just these, these pieces of functionality? Can I maybe put parts of my application in something that is a box? Actually, I'm not very sure that he would actually ask that. But, um, so the question is, can I? Funny thing is, Jose is here and he's like, yeah, you can, use engines. And I wanna clarify, engines are not just for pagination, generic administration, and authentication. Do not think that. Do not let anyone trick you into believing that. Do not let the API tell you that that's what they're for. Rails engine allows you to wrap a specific Rails application or a subset of functionality and share it with other applications. I submit to you that you should share it with yourself. Actually, I'm not just gonna submit that to you. Knowing this wireless, I probably don't have a whole lot of chance, but um, yeah, my text is way better. By the way, this is my first Rails commit. Here we go. I know, it's just documentation, and I should have said skip CI. Um, and this tells me, I need to tell you that engines are easy. I've, whenever I propose this to people, they say, but engines are kind of magical, and they, they kind of don't work, and they're weird. Let me show you this app again, this very simple app. So the next big thing actually doesn't have an app folder. This first page that I wasn't able to show you lives in a gem. More specifically, it lives in an engine. And that engine I call teaser, and it's living right here. 
And now I have to remind myself what I wanted to talk about. Um, so answer it first, then details. Engines are not magical mounting. Um, but I guess I'll first show you, next to this gem, I had said I wanted to use this other gem, which was a Rails application part. It was a big part of my functionality, or you could say all of my functionality. Now, if you have an engine in your app and you use it as an unbuilt engine, how do you get it to be provided by your app? And trust me, it's so simple. That's what you do. You can mount more engines. In fact, uh, you can have engines mount engines, all that. Now, one piece that I suggest, if you trust me and want to try this out, is that you make this engine that you make this engine say the following thing. Isolate namespace and then the engine's name. Because then you get that little box. Because then everything in that engine is in the namespace teaser. Um, and the next line here actually sh tells me what I wanted to talk about next, namely migrations. Again, question it I get. Uh, but you know, normally, I think it, with Devise and these other engines, you're supposed to install them and they copy their migrations into your application. I don't want to do that. I know my code is all together. I would like to keep my migrations in these engines. But actually, there's multiple ways of doing that. You can put them all in the main app and run them all at the same time. All the engines can just point to it. It's a bit weird, but you can do it. Or you can do this, where you say, I want to just, and this is not scrolling right. Um, I want to just put myself onto the load path for anyone else, which if I go to this, you know, somewhere here there's a line that says, in the main app, I want to use the migrations of that engine. So whenever I run the migrations in my main app, it will also run the migrations of the engine. Now there's, and I'm now skipping over these details, but trust me, there, all of them are actually easy. <laughs> Which ones did I cover? I said, talked about mounting. Assets, assets is a good one. Um, someone said assets are really difficult to understand because it's magical how they then are pulled together, but it's not. You know, you, maybe a JPEG file, an image file, doesn't have a namespace, but it, it's living in a folder. When you're doing this isolate namespace with an engine, all your images of that engine live in that folder, and when you want to include it in another engine, you require that engine and you point to the file. Of course, it's living in a folder, so you point to that folder. It is not magical. I already talked about migrations. Um, current project. We started out with three engines. And trust me, it's like opening Pandora's box, because you start liking to draw these arrows, and you might say, horribly, this is horribly complicated. But again, this is the first time I'm able to draw these arrows. If I make it one Rails application, it's all a big pile and I don't have any structure. Yes, the application is complicated, but I have some structure at least. So, and what does this app tell us? So, okay, I gave away, gave away a little bit um, of what it does by stating what it does, but so it's a TV show with a social network. That's actually not a TV show. Um, in this case, I could actually say that it's, it's called Showmobile um, and the PO, Tom's, think back there, um, if you want to talk to him about it. Um, so it's a cool project, because you watch a video, and then while someone is texting, texting in the video, you get that text message. So, so it's a show, which you can tell from this engine. It's probably administered here. There's some global admin stuff that's not really interesting. There's shared UI between those two. There is the God model user. I've stuffed it away in here, in this users and channels. And channels are shows in the nomenclature of that app. There's a gem in there that sends these text messages, and then there's a social network. And I think as, as we go along, we'll probably have a couple more of these just be, because we see, we figure out that there's more concepts in here. One I forgot, and this, this maybe tells you the most interesting piece about that whole thing. You make a show, and then it's published, scheduled into the social network. So that application, I think has an app folder, but it really doesn't need to.
both of these, these ways of putting things in boxes, gems and engines, I think are really simple. And I think that's just what they are. In the Eric Evans sense of telling a story about your application, they give you one level more of structure than you had before. Before it was application and all the mess. Now it's application, a little bit nice mess, but smaller messes. That's a good thing. And if you do them right, they tell the story of your application, and that's also a very good thing. Um, before I come to this last section, it is not an easy transition because if you write a Rails application, you know where everything goes. But as the, the talks from yesterday have highlighted, as soon as you start to deviate a little bit from that, it's, it's maybe a bit unclear to someone who says, I'm a Rails developer. Where does stuff go? Who talks to whom? How do you talk? You suddenly start to ask questions about what's the interface? So if you have to deal with questions that we have to deal with, like as a consultancy where you want to ramp someone, where you want to get a product out the door fast, then maybe there is more questions that you have to answer than just wanting to put stuff in nice little boxes. But I think it is a good learning experience to try it out. And if I can ask you to take one thing away from this talk, then do one thing. Think about this. Every gem that you make comes with, comes with a namespace. It comes with a box. And every Rails app you make does not do that. I wanted to find the most empty thing that I could show on the left side, but it's really empty. There's an, it gives you no boundaries. A Rails app pretends like it is the world. A gem tells you it's a little box. Try this. In your next app, namespace everything. And I would, of course, say namespace it in an engine. Do nothing in that Rails app. And then give yourself a box so you can start thinking outside of it. Thank you. Questions? Yes. Uh, so, how do you deal with a situation where you find that one of your gems has grown to a few days? The question is, what do I do if, um, if I realize a gem has become too big or an engine has become too big? And I have migrations in there, and I need to move them over. So um, if you follow this approach that I was showing, where you have the migrations within each engine, then go through the pain. <laughs> There's no other way of doing it. Um, Eric Evans in this book that may be a bit bulky, but he has a couple of points in there. And he makes the point that. If you are unwilling to move your application along on, these, on this larger scale in the agile way that we're used to, where you, where you put in code something that you have newly discovered about the system, and that might mean breaking out a new engine, moving stuff, renaming stuff. If you don't go through that pain, you know, in six months, he doesn't say it this way, but in six months there will be a guy who's going like, why do you always talk about A when in the code it's called B? Now, you could say, that problem doesn't happen when I'm in Rails, and I just don't do any of what you've been telling me. And that's true. It doesn't happen. But other stuff happens. These 50 files, folders happen. And that's not nice either. So I think, yes, you have new problems, but they're on a way better level. And there, there's a couple of more detailed answers that you can give. Do that. No, you don't. It, I, I thought that initially, but it, uh, it's not a problem. Rails 3, 2, I think, I mean, yes, so it's not a problem. <laughs> but the question was, do you have to restart the server every time you make a change in the engine? And you do not have to do that. So j changes in gems, changes in the engine, but Jose knows more about this. Yes. Oh. I have to preface everything I said about Rails was true for Rails 3. In Rails 2, engines are more difficult. Let's say it that way. 
Yes. How do you deal with engines that interact with each other? Like you have, you have a customer engine, and you have an invoice engine, and you have to share data. Yes. Or share view or so the question is, what do I do if engines depend on each other? And I only showed, I already showed this app. Do I have time to answer this? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so here, this publisher depends on this show admin because it is using its data to publish it to the social network. The publisher talks, and in this process, we discovered that we didn't want to leak active record because of Justin's surface area, basically, right? It's just too much information. So we actually, and I already call it Pandora's box, we realized if we don't want to do that, we have to define more properly what it means for something to be in a box. So we need to define the interface better. So when this publisher accesses the show admin, he talks to a few selected services that inter interact with the database that is hidden behind its publicly visible API. So the publisher uses two APIs and does not talk to the views for this particular app. So it, it only will talk to the service layer that we've added to the application. Yes? Uh, when you're doing testing uh, across the uh, are you doing How do you do that? How do you test? That's the question. How do you test this multiple engines? So first, the cool thing, thank you for the question, is on CI, with this kind of structure, you have about 20 builds, and I should, I said I would wrangle large code bases. My teaser app is the tiniest app that I can almost think of. And I've used this pattern, and it's working fine. It is so tiny, it has one page. But when I run the build, it actually runs, and it runs specs for the container app, which tests the integration of the, of the parts. So I have, I, same with the, the Pivotal app that I was talking about. The main app basically only has request specs, acceptance specs, that, that test whether the, the path through all the engines works. Uh, the second thing that's running here is um, model tests in the engine. The third thing that's running is request specs within the engine. The fourth thing that's running is Jasmine specs. Uh, the fifth thing is the annoyance gem. So here I've just lined them up. But on CI, all of these could run in parallel. So, and if you... 0 0.01 seconds, 0 0.02 seconds, 16 seconds for the um, except specs, and the others are also below a second. So this is a really good problem to have. How do I run my tests? But the way I've designed this particular one, you can run them all in parallel, except for the ones that might talk to the same database for the same engine. But it's a it, good question, and there's a good answer to testing this, this interaction. Yes? The question is, do we still have models, views, and controllers within one engine? And yes, we do. But as I was saying, we, we actually took, in the last project, a bit more of an even more uh, structured approach in that we don't talk to our models from our controllers, but always talk to a service layer in between. Um, but this, the engine down here in the middle, the users and channels, contains users, channels, and they're very tightly coupled, so we put them in one. Um, and uh, it's actually a bad example because it doesn't have front end. But the, the show admin has a certain domain, namely the elements of a show. So it has the models for the elements of the show, and it has the controllers to interact with those, and it has the views, because the other engines do not need to know anything about that. So they don't. I have one more if anyone wants, otherwise. Thank you very much.